Okay, we'll take a look at the order flow today uh, and uh, uh, how Bookmap can uh, display uh, a lot of this information very uh, clearly and objectively for you. Uh, first, we'll go through the risk disclaimer. Trading futures involve substantial risk of loss. It's not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Become a member there. You have the free resources and you can reach out to us at support at veloxpro.com. Okay, so here's bookmap.com. Uh, a lot of information here that might answer your questions. Uh, the pricing, uh, if you want to give it a try, is 49 per month for the basic and 99 for the advanced. Uh, the difference between the two are the, um, uh, the one-click trading add-on as well as some of these other add-ons here. Right. They are billed quarterly, so please note that. Uh, but you get a 14-day trial period with it. So this is a, a great um, opportunity to uh, check it out, see if this is something that works for you. If not, then um, that's fine. Um, you know, you gave it a try, and uh, you're here at these webinars. Uh, ask any questions that you have uh, regarding the software, and um, uh, you know, uh, that'll help uh, qu quite a bit uh, to... Uh, uh, get you uh, uh, up and running and what we uh, believe is the the quickest way to learn the order flow here okay and that's uh, using that replay mode uh, and I can I can demo that for you a bit later if you guys like just let me know okay well we're gonna take a look at um, uh, the order flow here but we're gonna integrate it with our macro view so we're gonna start off with the bigger picture uh, then we're gonna look at the micro structure Right. Uh, get an understanding of what's going on out there uh, and um, uh, then integrate that microstructure within the macro view and um, uh, th that'll be the order flow. Okay. So let's first take a look at our higher time frames. doesn't matter how you trade. We're going to just outline some, um, some higher time frame uh, levels uh, and then take a look at uh, see what the book looks like at those levels so we can objectively understand the order flow. All right, and that's going to allow us to pinpoint the entries and exits. Okay, so we'll take a look at the ES. Um, let's see, I got a 30-minute chart here. Uh, let's actually let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, and let's start off with a daily chart. Okay, so you can see that uh, we had that this down day here on the 21st, uh, and uh, we've come up and now test. We're testing into that area. Uh, but we do have a level there of interest okay, that we drew in uh, many days ago around this uh, 55 area or 50 maybe. Um, so anyway, we know that's going to be an important number um, around uh, 2350. Uh, we can we can clearly see the uh, the move down and the acceptance down below here. But we see buyers coming in the last three days here. All right, uh, so uh, buying interest is is coming into the market. Okay. And uh, here is the price action on the 30 minute. We can see yesterday the big move to the upside during the cash session. And uh, today, uh, 9.30 a.m., looks like probably initial move down and then a move back up. Uh, we just had oil inventories and spiked up above the overnight swing. Uh, so let's uh, draw in that line there. Uh, be interested to see what that looks like. And also the high of uh, yesterday during the cash session at 23.60. Okay, and then uh, we can look at the low of the day here, but I, I like this line I have here at, uh, at 49, uh, 40, 49.50, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, so we'll just, uh, we'll keep that. Uh, and let's take a look at the book now. Well, let's actually, sorry, we'll take a look at a five minute chart and see anything else. Uh, everything looks pretty good, I like it. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at the book map. Okay, here's our 60 level off the bat up here. Uh, here is our 50 level down here. I'm going to draw those in quickly. Okay, uh, and what else? All right, so something interesting around this 52 and a half uh, area, right? And uh, per, uh, potentially also this uh, around this 54 and three quarters area. So just a, a few lines uh, of interest and. In, uh, trying to gauge uh, what's going on here in Bookmap. Okay, uh, the uh, price structure that we're looking at. Uh, taking a look here, we can see the initial move down to, to the downside, um, 
and uh, and then we see the swing up above. And at this point, you can you can note that um, uh, we have traded to a new level above this 52 and a half. Okay, so this is one of the order flow uh, phenomena we can see on a bigger scale here, uh, but we see it again and again. In fact, we're starting to see this price structure again uh, right now. All right, so let me outline this for you. Okay, and you, we want to understand what the order flow looks like within these price structures. Okay, so we have a structure down here, and we have another structure here, and we have another structure here. Okay, and note the areas when we break these structures. They usually happen pretty quickly and pretty aggressively. Okay, and that'll be a sweep of the price book all the way through that area and then price will start to uh, either accept or reject in this newly discovered area. Okay, so that's uh, the, uh, the concept here. Uh, we can get rid of some of this noise. Okay. So uh, we can we can see here and I, I just want to get rid of this uh, this line here although it, it does look good. Um, it just uh, I want to look at the, the chart a little bit clearer here. Okay, um, Okay. so what do I mean by this in this price structure? Okay, so you can see the breakout here to the upside. It's a little muddled with this uh, um, around uh, 930 or 940, uh, the little spike to the upside and then the, then the move down again. Uh, but uh, you're going to see that these areas are going to be your low volume nodes, okay? Right in through here, uh, like I said, a little muddled because of this. Um, but uh, and and then in through this area here, okay, you're going to have your low volume node. Now we just had a lot of volume trade in there, but we can still see. We can look at my uh, uh, column data columns here, and we can see that we have a low volume node, right? So a lot of traders, if if price is accepting above this breakout of this area, and we see this pullback into this area, uh, we want to see if if traders are uh, engaged to uh, to buy here. And we can see, indeed, they are. Uh, you, you see the uh, liquidity they're starting to provide at this area. We also see a lot of volume that traded down into this area. Okay, the question is now, uh, is, is this an area where they want to buy and support price? Or uh, do we have the same phenomena that might be occurring on the opposite side here, uh, where um, uh, microstructurally, Perhaps we're going to see the same phenomena right here. We broke down below here, and we see sellers are starting to line up in this area here uh, between 56 and 57. Okay, so we're, we're looking at a battle between those two areas right now. Okay, and uh, actually that kind of leads into um, uh, nicely the first question we ask when we show up to this auction. Uh, what is the current configuration of the book? Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, uh, so showing up to this auction, we're asking these three questions: that understand the current configuration, where are the majority of the participants, where are they buying, and where are they selling. That that's what makes the market, uh, the liquidity that is provided. Uh, and then we want to understand how they how they behave um, at these areas when price approaches them. Okay. Do they really want to buy or do they really want to sell? And then we're going to look at where the transactions are taking place, okay, which is traditionally tape reading. Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, so for first question, uh, pretty pretty nicely answered. Uh, you can see that uh, the um, we have uh, b sellers here at 56 and three quarters, and buyers down here at 54 and three quarters. Okay, and that is the current configuration. Okay. And uh, how are they behaving as price comes up and, and approaches them? Okay. Well, we we're start. We can answer that question right here at this 56 and a half. Okay. Notice how. And let's just zoom in a little bit. Okay. Notice how this high liquidity in these areas here they start to pull when price comes up into this area. Now these guys at 56 and a um, and three quarters are now pulling as well. Okay. So where where are the sellers now? Well, now they're up here at 58. Okay, we're starting to notice them come into the book at 58 and uh, and above here. Okay, now we're starting to see a, a phenomena here, and let's see if we if we get a, um, a continuation of it. But uh, uh, they're starting to lift the offer with the aggressive orders. Okay, and uh, notice how the the buyers are becoming more aggressive. The sellers they pulled. 
Okay, and the buyers uh, they they're stepping up their um, their bids. They're now at 56. Okay, and let me just 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 a, a very quick um, uh, uh, adjustment to that uh, heat map, and you can see that uh, now I have a little bit more information at this zoom level. Okay, to give me insight to what's going on here. Okay, so we'll see now if uh, these guys, are they going to stay in here? Do they really want to buy? Uh, is this a deal uh, at 56, 56 and a quarter? Well, it looks, looks pretty good. I mean, so far so good. They're staying in here, but we need to see them. Uh, um, here, here we go. Here come the buyers. We need to see these buyers uh, lift the offer, okay? Sweep the book, okay? Uh, back up into some of these areas here. Okay. So uh, we're looking for um, uh, maybe uh, 59 now. We, we notice these guys at 58. Okay, so we're coming up and uh, uh, starting to. Uh, uh, we're just a few ticks away from testing them. All right. <clears throat> so and this phenomena here, uh, we we see again and again uh, in book map. All right, this order flow phenomena. This is a flipping of the book. Okay. Now you usually see this on uh, these breakouts, uh, just just like I've been uh, describing. That when you see, for example, the break from this area here, okay, and a return back to where we broke from, okay, your low volume node right here, and we we see the buyers starting to step in, okay, they're starting to become interested, okay, they they were sellers here. Um, well, it's a little bit higher. It's not really a flip of the book. Uh, a lot of time had passed, uh, but um, uh, this this is a, a probably a better example here. Um, they were uh, sellers here on the offer um, at this uh, uh, 56 and a half, and now they're buyers uh, just a tick lower at 56 and a quarter. Okay, and uh, now we're getting we're answering that second question: is is this flip sustainable? Uh, how are they behaving here in this auction? And we can see that uh, they're they're pulling liquidity. Okay, so it's it's um, it's not so. Um, it looked pretty good there for a little while, right? Pretty high liquidity, and, and then we can answer that that second question, right? When price comes out toward them, you know what what is their uh, their intent? Okay, uh, are they do they really want to be buyers here? Okay, and they're 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 a couple ticks lower now. Okay, so yeah, we uh, we we need to see. We, you know, you you we want to see uh, that intent to trade at these levels. Okay, and we're not quite getting it right now. Okay, so uh, looking for uh, uh, potentially you know more sideways action then. Okay, I mean this is this has the the opportunity here. Okay, we don't know, right? Uh, but uh, if uh, if they were if they wanted to bid up at these higher levels here, uh, and they thought that this was a deal at this price level, uh, then they're going to support it. Uh, it's a FIFO market; it's first in, first out. So if uh, they want to get their their size on in these areas with their limited orders, uh, they'll, they're going to stay in the book. Okay, and that that um, uh, is helpful for us. Uh, and we're reading it here in Bookmap uh, to understand the um, uh, the intent of these guys, uh, but um, uh, to to understand uh, the um, uh, the liquidity uh, at, at these areas. Like, um, uh, you know, what what is their um, uh, their 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 game here? Uh, you know, do do they think that this is a deal, or are they looking for lower prices? Okay. Are they getting aggressive? We're, we, we can note the difference between aggressive and passive limit orders. Okay. Now let's start to weave into this the uh, the transactions as well. All right. So where where is this volume trading? Okay. Well, pretty pretty nice cluster of volume down in this area here. All right. Also in this area here. Okay, now that that's indicative of a um, uh, of a downtrending market uh, because you can see we we uh, we we made a high here we did not breach that high or maybe we did by a tick or two. Okay, we see uh, now we we can we broke uh, below this little swing here and volume accepted. 
Okay, we uh, made an attempt to come back up and make a high here, but we did not. Okay, we broke down in fact, and more volume traded below at a lower low. Okay, so uh, now now we're starting to understand and read that um, uh, the the order flow in, in the transactions actually uh, is looking for price discovery now now to to the to the downside here. Okay. Okay, because uh, we, we can see that the, the structure here, at least in this area here, um, has, uh, has been broken. Okay. But uh, it was this area here, we needed to see if those buyers were going to step it up or not. Okay. And, the, and they didn't. Right? It looked like it. looked like they were going to. And we were looking for 58, the next level here, but uh, no, didn't, didn't get it. Okay, any questions? So, you know, reading, reading these transactions, okay, I mean, I'm seeing it really kind of, it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of both sides. I mean, obviously, re really nice uh, uh, volume dots in these areas down here. Uh, but the, this isn't so bad up here, you know. Volume volume traded up here around between 56 and 57. So um, it's it's not it's not decisive. Right. But whereas, uh, let's take a look at uh, maybe uh, some of the trending action if we can. Yeah, it's not it's not so so clear today either. But, uh, you, you know, what we'll notice usually in that trending environment is uh, areas like this here uh, before 10.30. Now, this is before some fundamental news, okay? So we had the oil inventories, and um, and you can see the market reacted toward that. Uh, but uh, uh, in, the, in this area here, uh, you know, you see a lack of uh, uh, aggressive uh, volume here. Okay, these little points down here, there's very little volume trading, right? Usually in that trend is what you see is um, uh, these areas down here, you see very few transactions and more transactions on the higher highs, okay? That's like in this area here, okay? As, as price continues to extend into higher highs, you see more volume trading at higher highs. And it, com it, it uh, continues to pull price up, okay? And that's just reading, reading the tape here. Okay, but we can also read, you know, the, um, uh, the, the intent of these traders. Uh, where, where do they want to deal? Okay, so let's uh, start the process over again and take a look here. Configuration of the book at 54 and at 58. Okay, four point range. And really nothing happened in the middle here. All right, so uh, let's see. Was there were some things I wanted to go over? Um, the volume dots, maybe. So, for those of you, uh, there's been some questions recently about uh, some of the volume dots, uh, the size being too big, uh, especially during the fundamental releases. Uh, well, let's let's click back to restore, uh, and we'll just you know sometimes you'll see a view like this uh, with really big volume dots, and it's. It's a uh, book map is, is correctly displaying that for you uh, because they're all in reference. It, it's showing the, the dot size in reference to other areas. Uh, so you understand that there was a lot of volume in some of these areas compared to others. 
but uh, if it's just too much, then just bring that dot size down, uh, and um, uh, you can uh, and then you can read this chart a little bit a little bit easier here. Okay. Now I have it set with the uh, Pi display. You can also look at uh, solid dots here, which will just be uh, uh, a line going right across the uh, uh, center, or you can look at the gradient. Now this is how originally how we had Bookmap uh, long ago uh, was the gradient here. So uh, all green was uh, aggressive market buys, all red is aggressive market sells, and something in between uh, that those two colors would be uh, buying and selling. Right, so I, I I do I really do like the uh, pie display. I think it's a uh, very clear. Uh, I can understand the the fifty percent line very very easily. So I just keep it on that. Okay, uh, I'm also using the this the uh, dot clustering here for smart. All right, you can uh, look at it with time. Okay, and we'll uh, input every five minutes. Okay. Or you can look at um, uh, volume by volume, and we can look at the number of contracts that traded. So let's input 500. Uh, let's input 1,500. Okay. So now a volume dot, uh, and you see they're all the same size, right? Because they represent 1,500 contracts that traded. So they're not. They're. It's not by time. It's by the uh, condition of the contracts traded. A lot of traders like that view. Now, if there was like 3,000 that traded very quickly, then you, you would actually see a bigger dot. All right. And let's bring it back to smart. Now, the smart um, clustering here, uh, what it's showing you is a, a basically a combination of time and volume. Okay, so... Uh, within a, and it's not time by a specific um, uh, number, like every five minutes. Uh, it's based on uh, the amount of activity within a, a time zone. So the more activity within a time zone, uh, then you'll start to uh, see um, visually a consolidation uh, of all of that volume within a bigger dot. Okay, but all, all the data is still there, and I can demo that here. We'll click on the hand tool, and uh, let's roll over this big dot right here. Okay, And you'll start to note that uh, the clustering is, uh, the algo is still working on it, but as I, as I zoom in, I'm breaking apart all of these trades because now they're not consolidated. Right? Uh, the, the time frame here is uh, we're looking at a second between each vertical dotted line. Okay. Now I can continue to zoom in here right, and continue to break apart all these trades. And you can see exactly we're showing every single event here. Now we're looking at microsecond level. Okay, We're looking at billions of seconds here, or I'm sorry, millions of seconds. Uh, we can look at nanosecond level as well. Um, but um, uh, it's, it's unlimited zoom, basically. We, we uh, continue to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, and we can see this is one lot. Uh, that traded right here, all right, in this universe of trades. Okay, so as I start to zoom out, though, note how Bookmap will consolidate that and aggregate it visually, and you can see what exactly occurred here. We have majority of it is selling, but there's some buying. Okay, as I continue to zoom out, uh, the same thing occurs again and again, okay, and that, uh, in the end, constitutes for this big red dot here, well, it's basically a little more selling than buying right in that area. Okay, let's zoom back in. Okay, so yeah, nothing nothing shaken here. Um, uh, good, good time to go over things uh, with you guys. So uh, ask away with any of your questions, uh, anything that you, you want to set up or, or look at. Uh, there, there are just so many tools here, so many powerful tools. Uh, just the volume alone. Uh, we're just looking at the dot clustering, but we can actually filter out trades uh, as well. Uh, obviously, you're, you're not going to lose any data. Uh, they will come right back. Um, but um, uh, this uh, minimum accountable dot size uh, will allow you to filter out uh, a number of trades. So let's uh, input 500. 
Okay, and you can see I have quite a few less dots now. Okay, so uh, the way that this works, um, hmm, let's see, let's bring it back to one and I'll describe it here uh, by going over the, this uh, uh, setting down below here first. Okay, minimum accountable trade size. So this is looking for a specific trade, a specific event that accounted for, let's say, 100 contracts. Okay. And you can see that there's not a lot of that kind of activity. So block orders like this don't go through very often in the high frequency environment. Okay. Obviously, that's a pretty big order. Let's uh, let's input five or 50 here. Okay, so there's a few more now, and uh, so each dot is going to be at least 50 or more contracts uh, for a dot to be presented. Okay, so if I zoom in, the, all of these dots are still going to be here. Uh, because that event is, we're looking for exactly that one event. Okay, actually, we can see that this 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 actually constituted for uh, quite a quite a few trades here. Okay, um, and uh, we can you can see how uh, that was consolidated. So I can use this tool and roll over here, and we can see this was for a volume of 135. Okay, one looks like one trade. All right, and I can, I'll, I'll make another, I'll show you the columns here. I'm going to make another column. I'm going to insert one, and I'm going to change that to a trades counter. So I know exactly what traded here. This is one individual event, one trade for 135 lots. Okay, as I continue out here, here's one for 66 lots. Okay, let's zoom in here so we have, so you can see it's one trade for 66 which is actually really interesting because we have the, um, uh, and I'm getting a little off, off the subject here, uh, but you can see that um, uh, the 66 right here, uh, this is our um, uh, iceberg detector algo. Okay, this is one of the add-ons you get with the advanced version. And what had occurred here uh, was um, uh, 66 traded when actually uh, there was nothing uh, it was re replenish the uh, the offer, okay, and you can see that 66 uh, traded, uh, but um, uh, the liquidity here is still 42. So how how is it possible for 66 to trade, which is even more than 42, but 40 the 42 to still be here? Okay, well it, it's an iceberg. It's an iceberg order. Okay, it's liquidity that traded that wasn't in the limit order book at that time. Okay, so Larger players like to use the iceberg or, uh, or uh, hidden order types. You can see there's quite a few going off here uh, to uh, to get their their fill on uh, their size. Oops, it's not what I wanted to do. Okay, let's try to find that area again. That was a good good little area. Was it here? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, Yeah, Andrew. Okay, I'll go over the um, uh, the API and then some of those uh, automated strategies as well. Uh, but uh, so anyway, we're looking at the uh, the iceberg detector uh, detecting uh, all of these using a hidden order type, a liquidity that wasn't in the book. It stayed at 42 the entire time, uh, but uh, 341 contracts traded at this point. Okay, and 23 events actually took place. Okay, so. Anyway, it's a, a bit of a demo of the uh, of the iceberg, um, but uh, in general, what I'm just trying to show here <laughs> and, and demonstrate is we have filtered the trades out looking for uh, 50 contracts or more to uh, go through the uh, time and sales. Okay. In fact, uh, the, the um, best bid and offer that you see here, this is kind of like a horizontal time and sales. Okay. But uh, you, it's just so much more visual and so much more powerful because we can filter for so many different things. Um, so anyway, that's uh, the minimum accountable trade size. That's what you're showing. Okay. Now let's bring that down to one, and we're going to look at every single event. Okay. Uh, and uh, now we're going to get into the next one, which is the minimum accountable dot size. Okay. Or dot volume. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll input 500. Now let's 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 go back to 1500. Okay. All right. So 
now this setting you can see we filtered out quite a bit right in order for a dot to present here um, and the way that this works is um, the uh, let me let me I'm gonna back up again once again I'm sorry I hate to do this to you guys uh, it'd just be easier to explain this okay in this high frequency environment the way that these markets trade is you won't see a lot of those uh, large lot transactions go through the reason being is that um, uh, it kind of tips off traders you, you can see large trades go through the time and sales Okay, a way to disguise that in the high frequency environment is to have the algo uh, instead of have one trade go for a hundred lots you will have a hundred trades for one lot each and you see this all the time okay as we zoom in we can we can um, well, we see that what will happen here is you get these flurries of activities very very quickly trade here okay in milliseconds here uh, you know, so, I mean, this is like a tenth of a blink of an eye, basically, okay? Uh, and, uh, and they just, um, they, they hit the bid very quickly here with all of these sell orders, okay? And it disguises their position, okay? In, in, in the time in sales, you'll see all these, all these one lots or two lots or, or, you know, smaller size go through very quickly, okay? Uh, but, um, the way that uh, you can filter for that with the volume dots here uh, is we can uh, look for, let's put in 1500, all right? And now this is gonna be dependent on your zoom level, okay? If I zoom out, uh, then uh, what we're looking at here uh, is an area where at least 1500 contracts have traded. But if I start to zoom into this level, now that dot disappears. Okay, why, why is that? It's because we can only show so much volume uh, within one pixel uh, of our screen. So when that condition comes true, that one pixel, okay, one vertical pixel slice, um, uh, shows at least 1,500 contracts traded, then, then paint a dot. Okay, and so obviously I, I will need, it'll, it'll depend on my zoom level, therefore. Uh, because as I zoom out, the, you know, there's more volume uh, being uh, traded within a smaller and smaller areas within the, uh, the pixel range in the chart. Okay? So uh, they consolidate into a, bit, a, a dot, and a dot will present. Okay? And what that allows you to do is then just look at significant volume. Okay, uh, very quickly filter for it. Okay, so this isn't a bad setting actually. This 1500 after the the um, um, oil inventories because it, it's showing us here where this where this significant volume took place. Uh, you see them uh, lift the uh, offer here pretty aggressively. We see another push. Okay, this is that indicative of that that trending environment, right? We see more volume trading at the higher highs and less at lower lows, but that changes here, right? And we notice that as well, okay? Um, and, uh, uh, and, and we're trading down in this area, and we've just been going sideways since, okay? So, um, yeah, I actually kind of like this 1500 for today, okay? It's going to depend on your zoom level and the market condition. Uh, but um, uh, it looks pretty good. And, um, uh, and then let's, uh, let's use that for uh, reading the, 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 the auction now, the intent of traders. Uh, and what's going on here in the book? Well, they're still up here around 58, uh, 54 though, they're, they're starting to pull, okay? No significant volume trading now at the moment, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, that has to happen. Uh, we need that volume to trade uh, and, um, or, uh, yeah, there could be a lack of, of volume, but usually what, we, what we'll get is uh, th those aggressive orders hitting the bid or lifting the offer up into higher liquidity. Okay. They'll sweep the book higher up into those levels, okay. just like in here or in here. All right, Andrew, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's, a, it's a little late. Um, I'll go over the um, uh, chase um, and the escape uh, strategies and the API uh, tomorrow. Uh, when will they be released? It will be released in the new version. It's coming out very shortly. I, I don't have yet a date, though. Okay. So um, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a pretty significant uh, upgrade, though.
Uh, so yeah, look, I'm very looking forward to it. Um, and uh, equities will be offered as well. Okay, so for those of you who trade equities, uh, this is going to be a real boon for you. All right, all right, guys. Well, let's um, let's call it a day. Uh, not too much to uh, to look at in terms of the order flow. Uh, so uh, we'll um, uh, you know continue on those kinds of days. Uh, we'll we'll go over more uh, features and functionality. And and and, and please and ask any questions here. Uh, it's really an opportunity for you guys to. Um, uh, get more familiar with what Bookmap offers, so it can um, adhere to the way that you trade, uh, which is really the key here, because everyone looks at at, at different things. Uh, and um, uh, I won't I won't know uh, what what you're looking at or, or what you need, and unless uh, I get a little bit of feedback from you. <laughs> All right, yeah, thanks, thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, so um, anyway, I mean, there's just levels, layers and layers and layers of depth here uh, to go through. I mean, the columns alone, uh, you know, uh, we, we haven't even touched that. Uh, but um, uh, we'll continue to uh, to go over these on these uh, so, some of these slower days here, all right, and then uh, ask any questions, okay? But uh, yeah, good, good example of that um, uh, iceberg. That was nice to see. All right, guys. Yeah, take care. Uh, we will catch up tomorrow and do the same thing. Okay. Bye-bye.